We are Team 4 of the Spinal Tappers, consisting of Eric Matthews, Liana Polokaitis, Samantha Hepner, and Catherine Gray. And we will be presenting our device, the Contour Next Easy Glucometer. In order to use the glucometer, first you will have to use a Contour Next text test strip provided with the glucometer. It is about the size of the tip of your index finger. Then you will place the test strip into the port into the meter. Next, you will pull the trigger on the lensing device, press the button, and then you will get your then you will squeeze the blood out and onto the test strip. The test strip will pull the blood into the device and the device will count down for 5 seconds. And it will display the blood glucose. And I'm also a type 1 diabetic, so obviously my blood sugar is a little high. So the glucometer casing is held together by three s screws that have since been drilled out, so now the casing can be popped apart. Inside is a motherboard, and on the other side of the motherboard is the LCD screen that displays the results. Attached to the LCD screen is a small conductor and on the back casing covered by a little cover are the two batteries. These are all of the parts of the glucometer presented individually. What can be seen here is the back of the LCD screen and the front of the printed circuit board. The LCD screen is where all of the data is displayed to there's a conducting strip across the top of it, just at the top of the circle, that uh, touches the copper um, lines at the top of the circuit board, and this is how the uh, circuit board c communicates to the LCD screen. The part labeled part 5 and part 4 are both resistors. Part 6 is the main processing center of the circuit board. The uh, silver squares on either side of the uh, center strip port are towards the bottom of the device are where the large buttons on the front of the device on the casing uh, interface with the circuit board. Here we see the back casing with the batteries in their seats and the back of the circuit board. The batteries are three volt batteries and they connect to the circuit board and power the circuit board via the uh, metal seats on the circuit board. At the top, label part 9, are the three screws that hold the back casing to the front casing and keep the circuit board enclosed and separated from the environment. Uh, these screws have since been drilled out so that the device could be opened up. Part 8 is a capacitor. Part 4 is a resistor. There are also several other small resistors throughout the uh, back of the, on the back of the circuit board. Part 7 is the back of the sensor that the test strip interfaces with, and the large black square below the uh, battery housings on the circuit board is a port so that the user can plug their device into the computer and transfer the data to a software on the computer. Next we see the circuit board front just by itself. This is the back of the circuit board outside of the casing. This is the back casing without anything else in it. Uh, it is an injection molded plastic. The circular holes are where the batteries sit and the other uh, protrusions help support and protect the uh, circuit board. The back of the back casing has a barcode and serial number and branding information. It also has a, a 800 number that Bear says is 24 hour, seven days a week in case the device is not working. The user can contact them and figure out why it's not working. This is the casing cover for the batteries that protects them from environmental factors and keeps them safely in the device. This is the front of the LCD screen. It is a graphic LCD screen that displays blood glucose concentrations. Uh, it's an interface for user input. Uh, displays if the uh, reading was taken before or after meals, error codes. Uh, it lets the user know when the batteries are low, etc. The front casing of the glucometer is also injected molded plastic with a plastic screen that protects the LCD screen. The device 
front casing contains branding information and name. It also contains the three buttons that are the primary form of user input. The two arrow buttons scroll up and down through options, and the M button is used to turn the device on and off and scroll through history and other options. The back of the casing has rubber squares where the user buttons on the front of the, ca on the casing interface with the buttons on the circuit board. This is the back casing with the batteries contained in it before the battery cover has been put on. When the device is turned on using the M button, this is what is shown to sh show to the user that all of the uh, parts of the LCD screen are working completely. This is all of the different possible options that uh, can be displayed on the LCD screen. They're never displayed all like this except for when the device is turned on. This is what the test strip looks like. It is recommended to use the Bayer Contour Next brand specifically. So the test strip includes six layers. The bottom layer is the circuit, which measures the amount of electrons that are contained from the glucose. Then the second layer is the chemistry layer. This contains the enzyme and the mediator. The third layer is the adhesive. Then comes the spacer and another layer of adhesive. Then there is the liquid attracting layer. This layer is going to attract the blood from the user. And then there is a and attached to this is a coating layer for protection. And this is to protect from heat or water or any other damage that the test strip might endure. So the chemical process that takes place on the test strip includes first the conversion of glucose to gluconic acid by glucose oxidase. This gluconic acid will then convert ferrous cyanide to ferrocyanide, which will induce an electrical current according to how much of the conversion occurs. And this will, in turn, calculate the approximate blood glucose.